Following last week's solid transaction, local trading in South Africa is expected to rise again this week. The U.S. jobs report fueled investor optimism that the Federal Reserve might be nearing the end of interest rate hikes. And last Friday, the JSE surged while the rand held steady at its best levels in three months. Meanwhile, four or five market indicators, including the rand, opened on Tuesday relatively negative within reasonable ranges. The rand opened relatively significantly weaker, though still remaining within reasonable ranges below the psychological barriers levels of 19 rand against the US dollar, of 23 rand against the UK pound sterling, and 20 rand against the European Union's euro. And to talk about these, I'm being joined on the news by an economist, Gabriel Cruz. Glad to have you join me, Gabriel. Good to be with you. Thank you. Now, how would you assess the current performance of South Africans' rand against major international currencies? Yeah, so I think you nailed it there in the intro. It's been a slightly down week, but in the context of the last week of uh, October and last and the first week of November being very positive. One of the reasons for that, I think, uh, beyond what you mentioned in terms of the American government looking to slow down their interest rate hikes, which uh, eases pressure on emerging markets around the world, is also the AGOA conference, the AGOA forum, which is the name of the big trade deal between America and African countries, including South Africa, Nigeria, Kenya, etc. And uh, there'd been some worries going into that, that uh, the conflicts in the Middle East, the conflicts in uh, Ukraine and uh, other issues domestically might cause a rift. Um, I think that the, you know, the midterm view is that South Africa has a very weak position in AGOA and might actually be kicked out uh, within a year. But none of that news came to the fore uh, because it is based on domestic policy. And in terms of the foreign policy stuff, uh, everyone held hands and kind of got along with the show. And so investors uh, got to look forward to um, African uh, countries, particularly South Africa, having direct access to U.S. markets on over 1,800 goods for, for zero tariffs. Mm. Uh, that boosts investor confidence and uh, I think contributed to last week's gains. But, you know, then the news cycle moves along and uh, we return to uh, load shedding in South Africa and the likes uh, depressing investor confidence. And that's why I'm seeing mm. a bit of a dip again. OK, Gabriel, how does the weak run, for instance, affect the cost of imported goods and services for consumers in South Africa? Are these sectors largely hit by these? And if there are, what are they? Yeah, so, I mean, it directly negatively impacts our ability to import goods. Uh, South Africa runs a uh, trade deficit, meaning we import more than we export. So uh, sort of the big picture is that it kind of hurts everyone. Um, but it, if you drill down to it, uh, I think that the, the same old story plays out, which is in this country, we have a huge unemployed base of people that are uh, living on the bread line and imported foodstuffs, imported clothes, uh, in, you know, basic textiles, uh, and very importantly, the cost of transport, uh, re, re, you know, depends on the cost of petrol, uh, basic energy commodities. Uh, also for people to heat their homes, to cook on paraffin stoves and so on. Uh, all of that stuff is negatively impacted by the RAND going up. And uh, if you sort of move up the income chain to the, the better off, um, it harms people's ability to to get the kinds of luxury goods that I think uh, make them feel like they belong to the interconnected, uh, you know, 21st century. And uh, as, as those prices climb, it, it also, you know, ultimately can be a pressure that chases people uh, into other countries. And to give a sense of, of what I mean by that, you know, if you, if you wind the clock back 20, 25 years, the RAND was five, six times stronger than it is now. Um, so the, the little weekly swings are, are, are kind of manageable. But in the, in the, if you look in a 20, 30 year horizon, if we were to repeat this and go to 40 rand to the dollar, um, I think that would create a serious uh, immigration pressure for middle class households that can afford to leave and live in a place where there's a more stable currency. And that's the most we can take on the news. Thank you so much for your expertise, Gabriel Krauss and economists. Thank you so much. Yes.